Hey all here, OS Reviews. You're watching our video review of the HTC U11 Life. This is a Android One smartphone that came out at the end of 2017, so it's now a couple months old. The reason why we're taking a look at this phone now is because recently we did a review on the Xiaomi Mi A2 Lite, another Android One device that is very popular and currently sells for about 170 bucks. I really enjoyed this phone. It was my first Android One device, and what that means is we get a very clean, vanilla build of Android that doesn't have any bloatware at all, and you have guaranteed updates for three years down the road, so it doesn't have any custom uh, launcher or skin on top of the Android experience. So I wanted to take a look at another Android One phone and stumbled upon this. When the phone first came out, it retailed for 350 bucks, which I think is a little too expensive, especially as a mid-end device since HTC haven't been doing too well lately. I think this device needed to be priced more aggressively to have sold well. Design-wise though, it is a very striking phone, and for sure it's more interesting to look at on the back than the Mi A2 Lite, which has just a matte aluminum finish. The finish on the U11 Life is very similar to the U11, which was HTC's flagship a, a year ago, and even the new U12 series embodies the same finish. It's a beautiful kind of shifting effect where as you tilt it against uh, the light, it creates different colors and patterns. But whereas the more premium U11 and U12 use a Gorilla Glass, Glass. The back on this is actually made out of acrylic, so it looks like glass, but it's actually just plastic, but still feels reasonably sturdy. What's interesting is by cutting a few corners in the build, such as using plastic instead of glass, making the rim also plastic instead of aluminum, HTC were able to put more effort into other features, including the fact that this is actually waterproof. So you can submerge in water for 30 minutes and it will survive, which is a feat I don't think many other phones can bring at a mid-end price. The price point of this device has now fallen to about 150 bucks. so you can find it on Amazon and eBay, which puts it square to square against the Mi A2 Lite. Other unique features, including the squeeze gestures, the edge sense that was borrowed from the premium U11 are found here as well. Essentially, you can squeeze the sides of the phone, uh, applying various amounts of pressure to launch into various different apps. We have a 16 megapixel camera on the back with auto HDR and a single LED flash. Now it is a single camera compared to the dual lens setup of many of the newer phones now, but keep in mind that the Google Pixel phones also only have a single lens design. So dual lens isn't everything. There's a lot of software algorithms that goes into making an image look really good. And I think some of Google's magic, because HTC were their official partner in making the Pixel devices, kind of rubbed off on them. Because for a few years now, HTC have stumbled on photography, but they've finally refound their ground, in my opinion. And this is a good example of that, because as a mid-end phone, the image quality really is super, super impressive. We also have a Snapdragon 630 chipset, which is ever so slightly more powerful than the Snapdragon 625 on the A2 Lite. Now, arguably the worst feature of the U11 Life is going to be the design on the front because it's utterly boring by 2018 standards. What we see here is a you know, very traditional 16 by 9 aspect ratio display, and on top of that, it has one of the largest bottom chins or bezels that I've seen out of any device. Although bezel size really isn't everything, I would say that uh, by having a smaller bezel, you get a more pocketable phone. So from a design perspective, I'm just a little baffled. The chin is also a little bit larger than on the regular U11, which has a slightly larger display as well. Otherwise, the phone itself, again, in terms of the software, is running on Android 1, which is, again, a huge benefit because we'll be seeing updates to Android Pie in a few weeks in addition to whatever comes next. This is a luxury, the fact that you're guaranteed security patches and future OS updates on a device like this, and it keeps the phone running very smooth and fast as well. So on here, we have zero bloatware nothing from HTC at all, just the standard Google apps including Maps, YouTube, there's a Play Store. At this point, I also want to pause and inject uh, a piece of information, which is the U11 Life is a phone that was actually on T-Mobile uh, support in the US. So there's a variant that you may find more commonly if you're buying it on eBay, for instance, but that model does not come with Android One. It has the exact same specs, the exact same design, but it uses HTC Sense, which uh, although is one of the more cleaner Android skins, I definitely prefer Android 1 because you'll be seeing more updates and it's 
more stock. So I would personally be a bit more careful if you're picking this up in the US. Uh, be sure to shop around and try to find one of the international versions or European or Asian versions that has Android One on board. Otherwise, the front also houses a 16 megapixel selfie camera that also performs very well. A earpiece, there is a proximity and LED status light. Down below on the chin, we do have a fingerprint scanner, which by the way is very fast. It's faster than the one on the A2 Lite in my testing so far. It also serves as a home key and has haptic vibration, but it doesn't physically press down. There's also a back key and a multitasking key for switching back and forth between apps. Alright, since I've raved about the camera so much, let's take a look at that first. You can double tap on the power key to instantly launch into it, so you can snap a shot even when the uh, device's screen is turned off. Just instantly tapping on this twice will launch into the camera very quickly. Shutter speed is very fast, and you also have the ability to change between a few modes such as Auto HDR, Flash settings, you can pull down here to capture a panorama. There is 4K video recording as well, which is great, but you only get stabilization when capturing in full HD. And the stabilization is done through software, it's not optical, but it's surprisingly good. In fact, it's almost as clean as a Pixel's uh, video camera, so that is extremely impressive. The flowers and branches, again, a lot of detail and very vivid and accurate looking colors. Again, display here is also great. It might not be, you know, the most bezel-less experience, but 5.2 inches is still quite comfortable. And some additional kind of photo samples here, again, captured using Auto HDR. You can tell how well detail is represented. The sky looks nice. We can see some details of the clouds, but uh, all the textures and shadows of things up close are still captured really well. Here's an example of the hyperlapse. Uh, so you can actually use software to edit it afterwards, including changing the speed up. So we can have six times or 12 times speed up, but you can tell how even though I'm capturing this with my hands, it looks very stable. And here's just some video captured uh, while sitting in a car, moving up and down and panning. I'm actually trying to shake a little bit, but you can tell how uh, the image is, again, just very, very smooth. So it seems like you're using a gimbal or something. And as long as there is still a little bit of light outside, it can still do quite well if you hold still. As you can see here in this night shot, it's using the auto HDR boosting to still do a nice job. The people are starting to blur a little bit as they walk, but the uh, landscape as well as the buildings are still very well captured in terms of their detail. Colors also look very natural. So I can squeeze once, for instance, to launch into the camera. I have that set up in the settings, but you can tweak that if you want to go into a different application. I've also got it set up so I can squeeze very gently to take an image just like that. And you can also long squeeze for a few seconds to flip over to the front-facing camera there. So again, a lot of uh, interesting tricks that you can do. So pausing the track there, takeaway is that the audio quality is decent. Now it's not going to give you boom sound speakers, a little unfortunate because HTC used to do that even on their cheaper Desire line of phones, uh, but you only get one single firing speaker on the bottom, but at least it does get plenty loud. However, one saving grace is bundled with this phone, at least if you buy it new, is HTC's USonic headphones. They're Type-C digital headphones that offer active noise cancellation, and the selling point here is it's going to be custom mapped to your sound profile. You get a prompt that says HTC USonic with active noise cancellation. You tap on this, and it takes about 30 seconds to initialize, and then it will try and map out uh, your sound profile. So whether you want the volume to be a little higher, a little lower, uh, whether you know, you're environment is really loud or if it's quiet, it's going to remember those and save it as your profile, and it really does work. Next, let's take a quick look at the web browsing experience. So as aforementioned, the Snapdragon 630 chipset performs actually very well because the 625 is already a processor that I think will exceed many people's expectations of mid-end smartphones, so the 630 is even a step above that. Not quite at the same level of the 636, which was released a few months afterwards, nor is it as fast as the Snapdragon 660 but it still delivers very smooth scrolling even on complex sites like the New York Times. Let's try another complex site such as CNET and load up the full desktop site. 
we can tell that it loads up very quickly. So that's one of the benefits of having a mostly plastic phone is the reception quality is excellent. So let's talk a little bit more about the edge sense, which makes the HTC U series so interesting. Now, some people think it's a gimmick, but apparently Google liked it so much they implemented it on the Pixel 2 and the upcoming Pixel 3 is rumored to have that feature retained. So under Edge Sense settings, you can actually customize the app that you want. For instance, a short squeeze right now is through the camera. I can also have a long squeeze, which is for the assistant. So I can long squeeze right now like that, and it's gonna pop up Google Assistant. And I can also adjust the squeeze force level. So this is a calibration measure when you first get the phone in the form of a threshold that you have to pass in order for the phone to recognize it as a proper squeeze. The good thing is uh, if you have a soft carrying case, which by the way, HTC also includes in the box, you can still access the squeeze features because it's soft enough for the pressure to still be applied without any issues there. Because it is running on stock Android 8.0, again, we do have all the uh, nice additions of Oreo, such as the swipe up gesture to pull up the drawer, which is very sleek. And we have contextual menus, so I can long hold on certain apps to take a look at their settings, such as Gmail here to compose an email instantly. So shortcuts can also be appeared by long pressing Call quality on the HTC U11 Life is also great because again, reception quality is super strong. There's multiple microphones for noise cancellation. So your voice comes across loud and clear. Uh, so there's really no complaints there when it comes to making phone calls really well. The only slight downside of this particular phone is probably gonna be the battery life. We've got a 2,600 milliamp hour capacity pack underneath. So that sounds again, quite small by 2018 standards. It does have a smaller screen though, and it has again, a very energy efficient Snapdragon 630 processor Processor, which certainly helps, uh, you know, in standby mode with the phone's display turned off, it can last a surprisingly long time, over uh, five days in my testing. But if you're using it uh, regularly or heavily, it's going to die within a day, a day and a half. So you have to charge it uh, fairly frequently, not quite as long lasting as the Mi A2 Lite, which has that crazy 4000 milliamp hour pack. Uh, but it's also a lot lighter, and the Type-C port ensures pretty fast top-up speeds when you do need to charge it up again. I didn't encounter any crashes or delays really in my testing period with this particular handset. And RAM management also seems to be quite good, even though we have uh, quite a few open right now in the background. It supports split-screen view and all those other extras that Oreo brings as well. So that's pretty much it as far as our revisited kind of review of the HTC U11 Live here at the end of 2018. Even though this phone is only a few months old, many people have already forgotten that it existed, which is sad because HTC used to be a dominant force in this mobile industry, but they've been staggering over the past few years. But the U11 Live, I think, is a device that's worth remembering in the collection of Android One phones uh, because at 150 bucks street price now, it is a definite deal. HTC were able to squeeze in more features that I think many consumers would actually prefer, including full waterproofing, NFC, a Type-C port that supports quick charging, as well as excellent audio quality. So there's a lot of interesting elements to this phone, including that squeeze, which uh, again, just makes it different from other mid-end handsets on the market. So you can check out more details in the links down below, but pretty much it's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's been our video review of the HTC U11 Life, the Android One Edition smartphone from HTC.